I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this really cool story. And, uh, and I just found this out like maybe a year ago or so in the military. So my father was a staff sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. My father was uh, killed in Vietnam in 1966. So, so this is the weirdest thing that happened to me. So I can remember the day that the soldiers came to the house to tell us that my father had died. I was in the kitchen making chocolate milk and my mother was in the living room with my great grandmother and the two uh, Marines came to the house and I remember my mother screaming and me dropping the glass. I didn't know what was wrong, but I went in there and my mother was crying hysterically and for some reason I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't want my mother to, to cry, so I was trying to make her kind of kind of smile and laugh and stuff. But I realized that, you know, after it with how just horrible everything was, and I remember the day of the funeral. I remember getting ready for the funeral. I had this clip-on tie because I went to parochial school at the time. I had this clip-on tie and 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 what happened was the Marine came into the room with a regular tie. And he took that tie away from me and he tied that tie for me and he showed me how to wear the tie. And he said, this is gonna be, this is gonna be much better. So I remember doing that. I remember sitting by the gravesite. They're handing the flag to my mother and my mother says, please, can you hand it to these two gentlemen, which is me and my brother. She says, they're the man of the family now. If you come to my house, if you come to my house in Pennsylvania, you go to my guest room, my father's flag is up there in a case with his dog tags hanging from there. My father. <laughs> My dad is amazing. So I really didn't know too much about my father. I got all these artifacts from the trunk that came back. My mother never really looked into it after my father had passed. And when she passed away, you know, I got all of that stuff and I looked at it. My father was a head of a tune and uh, the tune had all the incorrigible white guys in it and the black guys. It's the 60s, so you'd imagine everyone trying to get along and get together. And they were going through a rice paddy and they were ambushed in a rice paddy. My father was leading a group through there and actually had a point guy and he had a guy to his right. They were going through the rice paddy. At first, they didn't want to go through the rice paddy because it was an Agent Blue in there. They put Agent Blue. It's like an arsenic, and the Viet Cong put it in the rice paddy so the villagers couldn't eat the rice, but so they had to go to the government to be fed. But they're going through the rice paddy, and all of a sudden, they're ambushed. And my father, from what I understand, grabbed the guy in front, grabbed the guy to the right, and was dragging him out, and he was shot. Now, my father dropped this guy, but went back to get him, and as he pulled this guy back, he was shot, and he was killed. I didn't really re understand all of this until I did some research. I go down to the Vietnam Wall every year, and, or from here up to the Vietnam Wall every year, and uh, if you come to my office, in my desk I had my dad's name etched every year I go in there. I don't know if I'm gonna do it all of them. I just kinda uh, keep them in there. But if you don't go, you can actually go online, there's a virtual wall, and you go on there and they'll etch a name for you and they send it. But if you go virtually, you see all this group of people that are on there, people that were killed, and people leaving people messages and stuff, and the only you have to do is have to leave a message of us, you know, of who's sending it, so they, I would know. So I put Admiral David Reed, thank you very much. You know, Dad, I didn't really get to know you that well, but apparently, um, you, from what I can understand, you're a great man, and I can only hope I have like a smidge of what's going on in your life and my life. So fast forward to Las Vegas. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm opening up for Wayne Newton, okay? Um, yeah, well, this is the only crowd that would know who he was. But. <laughs> The people under 30 are going, Fig Newton's brother? Is that Fig Newton? I don't know Wayne, but his brother's delicious. So in any case, I um, was opening up for him. So there's all this room, the big showroom, and they're like maybe 1,200 people. So I'm performing and everything, and every once in a while in the show, I stop and I recognize people that are in military. And I was feeling good that night, and everything was going well, and people were having a great time and cheering. And I said, oh, they all stand up, everyone stand up. So all these people stood up, and they got this round of applause, and I went, okay, look, sit down now. It's my night, okay? Just kind of goofing around. So they all sit down except for one guy standing up there in the corner. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, he's gonna be pissed off because I told him to sit down or something like that. So I just kept going, kept going, kept going. And he just goes, Mr. Reed, Mr. Reed. And I can hear him. And it's cutting through me doing what I'm doing. And everyone else is kind of getting distracted by him, Mr. Reed. So finally he yells, Mr. Earl David Reed. I go, what the hell do you want? <laughs> he stood up and he's saying, Mr. Reed, my name is Robert J. Torter, United States Marine Corps. I was with your father the day he was killed. I've been looking for you for years to tell you what a great man he was. So, so then all of a sudden the room gets, gets quiet. It gets really quiet and I don't know what to do because I'm standing there and it's an emotional thing and you know, the band is back there, they're staring. You know, I'm staring. Wayne Newton takes it, he's, he's staring. <laughs> So I just started crying on the middle of the stage. 
So I ran up 14 rows, and the guy's like on the stage in Vegas. They say, Earl, don't ever leave the stage, because if you leave the stage, we can't protect you. And then you see how I perform. So <laughs> I went up there and hugged him. He says, we're going to have lunch. So I go lunch with him next day. Next day, we're at lunch. He has a bullet around his neck, an old AK-47 bullet. Now, I'm not a bullet person or gun person, so I don't know, but it was really old. It almost looked like a, like a, like a, a fossil or something was old. He says, I want you to have this. I want you to have this. I said, I can't take that you had your whole life. He says, I got to tell you one thing about your father. And I was like, but he says, you know, your father, Earl, he said, your father had no sense of humor at all. <laughs> he says, I always try to make your father laugh. I've done more push-ups than anyone in the United States Marine Corps because I try to make your father laugh. I never saw him smile. He was a tough son of a bitch. I see him smile one time and he was reading a letter from home. That was the only time that I seen him smile. But I've made scripture that I try to make him laugh and he says, as I you stand there and we stand here today, I remember doing push-ups one night in the rain and I could see your father standing over me with the hat on and the water dripping off his hat, yelling into my face, Nobody likes a comedian! <laughs> There's no place in this world for comedy! <laughs> he told me that story and he said, but if your father gets to you now, he said, he would be extremely proud. So, I'll tell you that story. All right.